It is a truth universally acknowledged that Jane is the bomb. My daughters were trained for battle, sir. Not the kitchen. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today I'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Jane Austen adaptations in movies and TV. For this list, we'll be looking at big or small screen adaptations that are based on or have been inspired by Austen's novels, taking into account factors such as popularity, critical reception, and faithfulness to the source material. How do you like it? Bath. Mm. Well, I've yet to see it. Since we'll be mentioning a few key plot points, it would be terribly impolite of us if we didn't give you a spoiler warning. Of course. I had not thought of that. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Jennings. Number 10, Northanger Abbey. Take her, and then I wear, she'll never see her more. We begin with a young lady who has read far too many novels. Kathy, what are you doing? Catherine Moreland loves the mystery and romance of her favorite gothic tales, but her overactive imagination, combined with a stay in an imposing and slightly creepy house, lead her to believe that something sinister is afoot. You said yourself the house was full of secrets. And so you decided that my father must be a murderer. This book was Austen's parody of the spine-tingling literature that was popular in her day. So it's full of comedic moments. The film also does a good job of keeping things fun and light. And Catherine's wild fantasies are especially amusing. No. Felicity Jones and J.J. Field have great chemistry as the protagonist and her suitor Henry Tilney. And that, at least, isn't just in Catherine's head. Will you marry me, Catherine? Yes. Yes, I will. Number 9. Death Comes to Pemberley While the heroine of Northanger Abbey only imagined intrigue and murder, the characters in this TV drama have to deal with it for real. Captain Denny! Banged for the coachman to stop and just went off. Wickham shouted at him too, and he jumped out also. How could he do such a thing? Then. Shots. <sighs> go! Go! Hurry up! Set six years after the events of Pride and Prejudice, this mystery involves the youngest Bennett sister, Lydia, and her husband, Mr. Wickham, and has none other than Lydia's older sister, Elizabeth Darcy, playing detective. Although we get to see some familiar Austin faces, this series is not based directly on anything she wrote, instead being an adaptation of the P.D. James novel, and is a more what-if with a dark twist. At the present time, our one suspect is yourself. And why would I kill him? He was the only real friend that I had, my God! It gets props for being an interesting idea, for letting us speculate about the Darcy's future, and for honoring the original by feeling like it could fit in their world. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Number 8. Mansfield Park I was told most definitely to drop her at the front entrance of Mansfield Park. Then drop her. Young Fanny Price comes from a poor family with many children, so she's sent to live with her wealthy relatives at Mansfield Park. Excuse me? Yes? How long am I expected to remain here? Unfortunately, they all treat her like she's below them, except for her cousin Edmund, and the two develop a close bond that's only threatened by the arrival of the scheming Crawford siblings. May I introduce Miss Mary Crawford? And her brother, Mr. Henry Crawford. Fanny is portrayed rather differently in the movie than in the book, as the filmmakers made her more lively and also made her a writer occasionally having her speak Austen's words directly to the camera. And Mrs. Norris's husband died, which did not seem to inconvenience her very much at all. She's moved into Mansfield proper, where life is decidedly less expensive for her. Despite this deviation from the text, we give the film credit for not shying away from the serious stuff, like the slave trade and the grim realities of poverty. Poverty frightens me. And a woman's poverty is a slavery even more harsh than a man's. Aww. Arguable. Number 7. Persuasion. This is Massacre. It is most pleasant to see you again so soon, Captain. The course of true love never did run smooth. Just ask Anne Elliot and Captain Frederick Wentworth, who were separated for years after her family persuaded her to reject his marriage proposal because they thought he wasn't good enough. I should have been happier had you were but 19, Anne. 
19 to involve yourself with a man who had nothing but himself to recommend him. Now he's back in town, and they're both older and wiser. But is the torch still burning? And if so, will either one actually admit it? The Lost Time, The Palpable Longing. Austin's last completed novel is also her most poignant. And both this film and the 2007 TV version really give us the feels. Are you? Quite certain. I am. I am determined. I will. The 95 film gets bonus points for keeping it real, doing away with makeup and fancy hairstyles in favor of a more down-to-earth look. Number six, Clueless. Okay, you're probably going, is this like an Oxima commercial or what? A 90s comedy about a popular Beverly Hills high schooler with a fabulous wardrobe might not seem like an obvious choice for this list, but it's actually based on Emma, Jane's 1850 novel about a young wannabe matchmaker. Look at guys, she's so cute. <laughs> All people can be so sweet. Like Emma Woodhouse, Cher Horowitz is pretty, rich, and blissfully unaware that she lives in a bit of a bubble. She thinks she knows what's best for everyone, leading to some well-intentioned meddling in their love lives. Now Josh hated me. It all boiled down to one inevitable conclusion. I was just totally clueless. The movie stars Alicia Silverstone in her breakout role, as well as a young Paul Rudd and an adorable Brittany Murphy. Hi. <laughs> Funny, sweet, and extremely quotable. Ew! Get off of me! Ugh, as if! It had a lasting impact on pop culture and is still admired to this day. How totally Austin esque. Number 5 Bridget Jones Diary. Like Clueless, this is another less obvious choice. But the initially tense dynamic between stuck-up lawyer Mark Darcy and charmingly awkward diary writer Bridget Jones is ripped straight from the pages of Pride and Prejudice. I hope he's good enough for our little Bridget. I think I can say with total confidence, absolutely not. Well, I'm sure he'd say the same about you, given your past behavior. Sorry? I think you know what I mean. In a very meta twist, Colin Firth plays Mr. Darcy just as he did six years earlier in the BBC adaptation of the book. Good day, Miss Bennett. Hey, if it ain't broke, right? Just like the source material, the film features an ordinary, relatable heroine whose flaws and struggles make her even more lovable. And it does a great job of balancing humor. Apart from the smoking, and the drinking, and the vulgar mother, and the verbal diarrhea. No, I like you very much. Just as you are. Aw, he wants her to be herself. Now what could be more attractive than that? <laughs> Someone exactly like you. Number 4, Emma. The most beautiful thing in the world is a match well made. Meet Miss Emma Woodhouse. She's bright, lovely, and has a bit of a Cupid complex. Oh! My lace. Oh, please have the goodness to go on and I will rejoin you as soon as I can. Although she is adept with a real-life bow and arrow, her aim is rather off when it comes to actually hooking people up. But that doesn't stop her from trying, as she attempts to help her friend Harriet make an advantageous match with Mr. Elton, despite the fact that Harriet really likes someone else. I have consented to marry Robert Martin. <laughs> Whatever happened? Gwyneth Paltrow's bubbly portrayal of the well-meaning but overly confident Emma is right on target. Entertaining and pretty to look at, the film was generally praised by critics and Janeites alike. Well done, indeed. <laughs> Number three, Pride and Prejudice. Tell me, ten thousand a year, and he earns half of the other shit. The miserable half. <laughs> Turning the silver screen into a beautiful golden sunset. This adaptation of one of Austin's most beloved novels is arguably the best looking of the bunch. I love this dance. Indeed, most invigorating. It's your turn to say something, Mr. Darcy. Throw in a delightful Oscar-nominated musical score and you've got a treat for both eyes and ears. 
the hate-love relationship between the spirited Lizzie Bennet, played by Keira Knightley, and the seemingly snobbish Mr. Darcy, played by Matthew McFadden, simmers with underlying passion. Are you well, Mr. Darcy? Quite well, thank you. I hope that the weather stays fine for your sport. I return to town tomorrow. So soon. The unwanted proposal for Mr. Collins is hilariously awkward. I am not the sort of female to torment a respectable man. Please understand me, I cannot accept you. And the intimidating Lady Catherine is portrayed by the fantastic Dame Judi Dench. If you're an Austin purist, you probably weren't too crazy about the intimate final scene. But the overall experience was so enjoyable that you might just have forgiven it. You have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love, and love, and love you. I never wish to be parted from you from this day on. Number two, sense and sensibility. There's some blue sky, let us chase it. I'm not supposed to run. This film version of Austen's first published novel follows two very different sisters as they attempt to find love in late 18th century England. Marianne Dashwood, played by Kate Winslet, is a passionate and romantic dreamer, while her sister Eleanor, played by Emma Thompson, is far more reserved and sensible. Your sister seems very happy. Yes. Marianne does not approve of hiding her emotions. In fact, her romantic prejudices have the unfortunate tendency to set propriety at naught. Thompson gets extra cred for also writing the Oscar-winning screenplay. Although changes were made to the male characters to update them for a modern audience, the film still remains true to the spirit of the book and to the core relationship between the sisters. Whatever his past actions, whatever his present course, at least you may be certain that he loved you. But not enough. Enough. The 2008 miniseries was also quite solid, but it's tough to top anything that features Alan Rickman reading poetry in that glorious voice. For there is nothing lost that may be found if sought. Shall we continue tomorrow? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Would you like to dance? I can see Sir James is a kind man, and if it weren't a matter of marriage, I I'm sure I could like him. But marriage is for one's whole life. Not in my experience. Number one, Pride and Prejudice. Miss Bennet. Mr. Darcy. I've been walking the grove some time in the hope of meeting you. Man, what was in the water in 1995? Oh, right. It seems like everyone had Austin fever that year including the creators of this popular BBC miniseries about misconceptions and marriage seekers. He loves me. <laughs> of course he does. Jennifer Ely and Colin Firth are well cast as Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy. Plus, the story and dialogue are quite faithful to the book. But this entry's biggest claim to fame is the scene where Elizabeth runs into a tussled Darcy in a wet, white shirt. Mr. Darcy? Miss Bennet. I... Uh... I did not expect to see you, sir. We understood all the family from home, or we should never have presumed. I returned a day early. It doesn't seem scandalous by today's standards, but it's basically their era's equivalent of watching someone strip. It spawned tributes and even a giant statue. Uh, it's 12 foot tall, which is about the height of a double decker bus. It wasn't the first telling of this classic tale, but it certainly made the biggest splash. agree with our list? Yes, F. Which Jane Austen adaptation do you love the most? I shall never relinquish my sword for a ring. The right man you would. For more splendid top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Wait a minute. Nice boys don't kiss like that. Oh, yes, they Keep it satisfied. Someone exactly like